Hey everybody, it is the beginning of a new vlog and a really, really exciting one. I am actually finishing off my packing because today we are going to the Franchuk Literary Festival. I'm sure you know by now, I spoke about it. I won the, uh, I was one of four winners to win the Jonathan Ball um, Publishers competition to be able to attend the Franchuk Festival. So today is the day. The festival begins today. And today is Thursday and we are coming back on Sunday. Really, really excited for that. I wanted to extend my trip uh, in Cape Town to be a little bit longer, but then I figured I'm traveling again in two weeks for my birthday, so it just doesn't make sense. So it's okay. But I'm really, really excited, looking forward to it. Also a little bit anxious. I'm just social anxiety. It's a real thing, um, especially knowing that I'm going to be around people that I'm not familiar with and I need to be, you know, it's, it's, I'm a little bit anxious. Every time I'm a little bit anxious, it normally, it normally gets, it normally gets a little bit better when I, um, I get there and I start engaging with everybody, then it gets a little bit better. But outside of that, right now, so anxious, but so excited as well. So I'm packing right now. I'm going to finish that off. I'm going to change a little bit later on when my ride gets here to get to the airport. And then we're going to go. We're heading to Franchet. Let's go. I'm, I actually want to advise you guys pick these up. This has my skincare in it. And I got these wash bags from Take A Lot. And they're really good. They're sturdy. The price is really great. Uh, for three, it's just under 200 Rand. And they come at different sizes. So this is one that I use for my skincare and all of that. My hair care, skincare, all of that. And this one I've got here for some of my makeup with bits and my, you know, my makeup, my makeup removal wipes, my cellar water, all that kind of stuff. I have it in this one, which is a slightly smaller size. I highly, highly, highly recommend these. These come in so, so handy. And pretty much done packing. Uh, just a couple of things here and there. Outside of that, we should be done. And it fits perfectly. Yeah, yeah. So airport fit is always uh, track pants. This is white. This is like a sweater and track suit set. I'm going to be wearing my diesel sneakers down there. Love those. They're not the best to walk in all day. If you're somebody who knows how Chuck Taylors feel after a long day, mm -hmm, same vibes, same effects, but a really, really decent and nice pair of sneakers. So I'm going to wear those. They'll match well with this. And my little tiny camera bag from Country Road. And this. This is the star of the show because I am going to a book festival. So I've going, I'm going to have two of the books that I'm going to read on the plane in here. And it's going to serve as an extra bag just in case I purchase some more books at the festival. I don't think I will. But if I do, I'd like to have just, you know, the bag as a spare. So absolutely love so excited looking forward to everything really really excited for the day ahead so let's let's do our thing girl let's do our thing
it is day one officially of being in Fanchuk and finally you're going to be able to see everything you're gonna see the room you're gonna see what I got going on today there's a bunch of things that I need to do for the Fanchuk Literary Festival am I excited yes am I tired yes so let's get into it I've uh, got a lot of content that I need to shoot for this festival and I need to take a shower, have a cup of coffee, prop myself up because there's a lot I gotta do. So let's go. Let's go. Okay, let's go. I look crusty, but I'm gonna look just now.
So it's a little bit later on after having breakfast and I thought I should come to you guys and share with you some of the books that I got from the Franschuk Literary Festival. Um, before I share all of that with you, along with some things that I got from Take A Lot, I'm just going to be unboxing a couple of things. I wanted to share a little bit about the trip to Franschuk and how I feel just so blessed to have been given that opportunity. It was so much fun. I had a great time. I met great people. Um, it was a competition that I won for Jonathan Ball Publishers to attend the festival and also just to do some sort of social media content work for them. And it was really, really fun. It was a lot of walking. <laughs> yeah. I was walking around 11,000 steps a day and I was there for four days and it was really just so much fun as a book lover being able to see some of the authors that you read from and experience new authors and because of that I experienced new authors, I sat in sessions with authors I hadn't heard of and I absolutely, I was just like, <gasps> I didn't think I was going to buy books but i did i did i bought i think four or five books and no regrets love it so happy for me but also jonathan ball publishers was kind enough to offer us some extra books and even said that listen if you want to do a number of giveaways if you don't have enough books you can contact us and we will send your winners of the giveaways the books and i was just like they love us they love us. Um, this is one of the reasons why I always recommend you watch my book videos. I do book videos even though they're not my highest viewed videos. It's because, you know, not everybody is into reading. And I kind of get that. It's fine. But I am. I'm into reading a lot. And so being just given that opportunity to go to Franchuk, the weather was amazing. We had great food, wine, because of course we were in wine country. <laughs> That, what do you mean? Um, I just never really got a chance to explore the way I wanted to. I was supposed to see my sister that weekend and then we realized that we were just so far apart. It's about like an hour, 15 minutes away. And we realized we're just so far apart. I was just like, no, it's fine. We, we booking a trip for later on um, in the next couple of months to go to Cape Town. But this time around, we'll be going together. We'll be celebrating together and all of that. Um, so these books kind of feel like an early gift 
birthday present to myself for all the ones that I've bought, the ones that are for me. They feel like an early birthday gift to myself because my birthday is in two weeks. Uh, by the time you see this, it'll probably be a week away from my birthday. But um, yeah, amongst other things that I want to get for myself. There's other techie things that I also bought, but I don't think they'll be part of this vlog. I think I'm going to wrap this vlog up here after now um, because there's a lot of friendship content to get through and edit as well. And yeah, in that vlog, this vlog, I'll be sharing with you some of the, the, the stuff that was going on in my head um, during that whole trip. So for now, I'm going to share with you some of the books that I did receive. Uh, these are all the books that I got, came back with. Um, and I'm excited. Some of them I bought, some of them are signed by the authors that were there. And this is one of them. This is Kobe Ben Ben's No One Dies Yet. And that cover is absolutely beautiful. It just says, how do you begin a murder story starring a curious foreigner and an opportunistic local without giving away the entire plot? Who died and when? Why? You start with the obvious villain. So Kobe Ben Ben is originally from Ghana, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. And he was there. He is so charismatic, so fun, so free, just so open. I absolutely loved sitting in on his um, sessions. And of course, he signed the book for me as well. I don't want to get it too close because I don't know. I feel like it's more of a personal message, but I, I cannot wait to read it. The cover is just phenomenal. So stunning. So stunning. Um... One of the books I went down with is Honey and Spice. This is by Bolu Babalola, and I never got a chance to read it. But while I was there, I did get a copy from Jonathan Bow Publishers, Honey and Spice. And this one is signed. No, no, she signed Love and Color. But um, this one I am going to keep for myself, but I will be buying one of you guys a copy because it's not right for us to give away ox. This is an arc, basically. So this is the full published copy, blah, blah, blah. So I am going to personally buy one of you guys a copy of this as well. Um, because I haven't re read it either. And this is my favorite size when it comes to uh, books. And this is also a romance novel. And it features a girl who is in, you know, a college, university, varsity. And she runs this... She does this radio show for the campus, for the varsity campus, and uh, she she wants to find a fresh angle for her radio show, and she teams up with a guy by the name of Malachi, and it pushes them closer together, and I think it's a trope of fake dating, I think so, but Malachi is known to be a serious and notorious heartbreaker, so <laughs> I'm excited to read a little bit about the word. Um, what was signed by Bolu Babalola, and I've got two copies. The one that is signed is mine. Sorry. I got them on different days. If I had them on the same day, then I, you know, then I would have gotten it signed. But yes, she did sign one, my copy. Um, she did sign it. She did. She absolutely did. Yeah, she did sign it. This is my copy and this is going to go to one of you guys. Um, if you've been following me for quite a while, you'll know that I've been, I've read this book. I read it. I have the cover, my copy of it. It's over there. I'm looking at it now and I loved it. It was one of my favorite, favorite books and the year that I read it and it's an anthology so it's different stories that are taken from mythical tales like folklore of different parts of the world some countries in Africa some countries in I think the Middle East as well um, but she, and then she's got two or three that are hers and they are so good they're so good one of the stories in here is called Naledi and <laughs> if you know you know uh the other one that i did get to see the author speak in session is a soft landing and this is by wisani mshwana and he was speaking in a session called the post patriarchy and they were speaking about um how patriarchy and 
uh, forms a fundamental part of our lives and our society and how it is it informs a lot of traumas that so many people have gone through and this one is where we follow a character by the name of Anzani who grows up in a sort of a rural community but then moves over to Cape Town to start a new life but he carries a lot of difficult um, memories and emotions from back then from from back at home at some point he, something happens and he needs to go back home and it kind of the past kind of unravels and brings itself to the present and he needs to confront that doesn't that sound amazing jeez that sounds amazing I think I explained it pretty well one of my favorite authors along with Bolu Babalola is Candice Carty Williams and this is my copy this is people person and she signed this of course she did Candice is just amazing yeah she signed this down here and she's amazing this story is insane I'm literally only 30 pages into this and it's about a dad who has six kids with four different women or five kids with four different women or something like that but um it's it's insane yeah he tries to get the kids together something happens i actually don't know much about it but the first 30 pages that i read in the first half an hour of the flight to cape town and then i met another author and I, the, the the lady who was sitting next to me was also an author uh, who was going to the Franchuk Literary Festival because she had a signing and all of that and I had no idea and finally I picked up Lucky Girl I bought this one for myself at the festival because I sat in a session with Irene Mushemi Diritu and she was there and she was talking about the book and I forgot what the name of that session was but it is a book on a story about a young Kenyan woman who flees the expectations of her mother for a life in New York and it challenges all her beliefs about race, love and family. Fierce and tender debut about the lives and loves we choose, what it meant to be an African immigrant in America at the turn of the millennium and how young woman finds a place for herself in the world. Doesn't that sound amazing? And look at that. Um, and then from Jonathan Ball, before we look at what I got from Take A Lot, I ordered these a couple of weeks ago, so I don't remember even what's in there. But uh, I did get something from Jonathan Ball Publishers. Let us see what the people at JDP have gotten your girl. Can you see the top of it? Can you already see what's in there? Ah. <laughs> oh my god. No, you're joking. It's got my name on it. It's a little mock Stanley. <laughs> oh gosh, I love it. Oh. oh. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Does it come with a straw? Oh, yes, it does. <laughs> it comes with the straws. This is so cute. Oh, wow. Oh, thanks, guys. Going out of their way with the Jonathan Ball Publishers logo and my name makes it extra special. I don't even know if I'll use it because it makes it so much more extra special. Love that for me. Thank you so much to the guys at Jonathan Ball Publishers for the festival, for the books that they send me continuously and religiously. I am managing to build my library much faster than I thought. I was actually thinking, I was counting the number of books here and the number of books behind you guys. You're not going to see it. But in total, it's just under 200 books. And that's not even the other side. It's just, yes. They say you have a library once you have over a thousand books. So working towards it and then from take a lot we got these two i know they're makeup products i know for a fact that they're makeup products but i just don't remember exactly what it was that i got so in here oh yes <laughs> oh yes in here we've got max studio fix 
foundation in NC45. I'm in NC45. NC50 is a little bit too dark for me, so I use NC45. And given the fact that we are jumping into winter, it actually matches me better here, as you can see, than it does here. But um, it looks good once I've blended it out and stuff. And given the fact that we're going into winter, my skin complexion is going to lighten up a little bit more. So we got our NC. And then, yes, I think the other one is another foundation. It is. Uh, I wasn't sure whether I got the... I don't know if I got the double wear or if I got... What did I get? Did I get the double wear or did I get another brand? Because I've been looking at a number of foundations and... Yeah, my... My higher end... Ow! My higher end foundations are dwindling. <laughs> Oh yeah, I'm right. Oh, I've got a little I got a little free gift in there. Okay, that's that's cool. Um yes, I did get um double wear and my shade is rich caramel. That is my shade. It has been for the number for the last number of years and I haven't bought a double wear in a really long time. That's my shade. Ta-da! <laughs> um, this is one of my favorite foundations of all time. Both of them. Both of them are really high up there. Uh, my skin agrees very nicely and well to them. Okay. And then my new favorite, new favorite fix spray is this one. The Lasting Fix by Maybelline. Really great keeps your makeup absolutely put and all the time that i have makeup on and i'm asked about what makeup am i wearing when i'm out on the streets and i tell them what foundation what do you use for your setting spray i always say this one i've been using it for the last couple of months because my favorite one is from mac but i, I feel like um the price of the the Fix Plus is actually getting ridiculous at this point, and it doesn't make sense for me. I'd rather buy a foundation that is very good and a higher-end foundation than buy a setting spray for equivalent price to a foundation. It just doesn't make sense to me. That's pretty much it. This is where I'm going to wrap up this vlog. I hope you guys enjoyed this version of my visual diary, Life in My 30s, and... I just have a huge sense of, I feel a huge sense of gratitude and I've been feeling it, let's say for the last week or two, where I'm just like, you know what, things are not perfect, but everything's good over here. You know, everything's good over here. Um, I would have preferred that certain things be certain ways and whatever. And sometimes we just not going to have things go our way, you know? And I'm at that point in my life where I'm learning to be, I'm learning to be okay with that. Uh, for me, somebody who's quite the perfectionist, it's very hard for me to consolidate when things are not going the way that I would like them to go. Um, because for me, when they're not, then I don't feel like I'm in control. And that for me is a huge, huge destabilizing fact. And yeah so i'm just learning to be okay with the uncertainty to be okay with the way that life currently is right now to be grateful for what it is that i do have um and and just to learn to be okay with that you know that we're not going to always have the answers we're not always going to have um th there's no map in the journey of your life you know what I'm saying? There really isn't any map in the journey of your life, but you can live it to the fullest and be present for it and open yourself up to new experiences and new moments. And and uh, that's what I'm trying to do. You know, I'm in the stage where it's like a flower kind of blooming, especially coming out of that self-isolation period. And I'm starting to spend time out more with people more um so I'm, i feel like i'm in my blossoming stage and it's crazy because i'm blossoming in winter it doesn't make sense 
but to be honest winter is my favorite season so i'm excited there's a couple of things that i also got clothes wise from zara and woolies and all of that but i'll put that in my next vlog along with some tech things that i bought i i picked up a new set of airpods and yeah my old set were just gone hey they were finished so i picked up a new set of airpods i got some new mics um because i'm planning something really exciting with a friend of mine actually that brings me to say that if you've been wondering where the mind over matter podcast is it's going to be put on hold because it's going to be replaced with another podcast and it's not just me in this one so i'm really really excited for that but everything will be announced on the so all you people who said oh Kato, you know you'd be so good with radio and whatever you're gonna get me in a podcast hopefully bi-weekly and there's going to be a co-host you know with so so i'm co-hosting with somebody else and every week every two weeks there'll be something new we're still in the works of managing we're still doing the background stuff setting it up signing it up all of this i don't want to mention the name as yet because um my friend is a designer so she's also doing the artwork for it and blah 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 it's really exciting it's really exciting so yeah hopefully the first podcast episode should be ready to go by the end of june so really excited bought some mics um but i'll show you all of that in the next vlog so i'm feeling very good i'm feeling very good i'm feeling very grateful i feel like my life is taking a turn um to just be in this place where i just i just want peace and i want peace of mind and man am i getting it <laughs> am i getting it so i'm gonna go i hope you guys enjoyed this vlog and if you did please like subscribe tell people about the channel um, working really really hard on this platform so um, any sort of help that you could give even just by liking the video and watching the ads is greatly greatly appreciated I love you guys thank you so much for joining me in this week's installment of my visual diary life in my 30s I'll see you in the next one until then sayonara